What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor and today's tutorial is on the biggest safety feature that you've got in your car, the mirrors. So the lesson on mirrors should be done right at the beginning of you learning to drive. You need to know when to use them, how to use them, how to set them up and the limitations of the mirrors. So firstly, how to set the mirrors up. Every car is going to be slightly different. This car's got electronic controls for the door mirrors. So let's run through how to set them up now. So just down here above the window controls, you've got the mirror controls. In the middle, you can select left mirror or right mirror, and you can go down, left, right, or up to adjust the mirror. So in my right door mirror right now, you can see a lot more sky than road. We need to adjust that, bring the mirror down so that the road comes up to about halfway, just like that. And on the left hand side, you can see the car. If you want a good guide of how much car you should see, there should be about two fingers of car on the left hand side. So if you just hold up two fingers to the wing mirror on the left hand side, the car should cover just that much. So on the left hand side, we're gonna do the exact same. You can see we've got way too much car. So let's bring the mirror out, out, out. And then we've got a lot of pavement. So let's bring the mirror up. And if you can't see the sky on top, it's because there's houses, trees, etc., in the way. So just imagine the sky above the, above the pavement. We've got half the pavement and half of the rest of the road furniture, houses, and sky on top of it. Okay, and lastly, we've got the center mirror. We need to adjust that so we can see the whole of the back window. So let's do that now. Whole of the back window in focus, and you'll see the top of the back window and the bottom of the back window as well. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we've set the mirrors up. Let's look at how we use the mirrors. We use the mirrors in pairs. If we need to check what's on our left or right, we need to check the center mirror first. Why? Because this mirror is made of flat glass. The door mirrors are made of curved or convex glass. That's really good because it helps you see further and wider, but it will distort the picture. So anything that you look at in your door mirrors is gonna look smaller and therefore further away. Let's think about this. If we want to overtake a cyclist, we're going around the cyclist, then we check our left mirror. The cyclist is gonna look small and therefore further away. So if we move in on the cyclist then, we're gonna think that the cyclist is further away and probably cut him up and give him a good fright. So always check this one first. This gives you a good idea of the distance, gets your brain thinking about the real distances around the car, and then we check this for a wide view of the road and everyone's happy and safe on the road. So to illustrate that, do this test next time you're in a car. Have a look at the car behind in your rear view mirror and read the number plate. JX04 is the number of the car behind. Look over your left shoulder, the numbers are exactly the same size, JX04. Now let's find that in the door mirrors and I actually can't read the numbers, they're so small. That's such a good illustration of how much smaller the door mirrors make everything look. Okay, so when do we use the mirrors? We use the mirrors quite a lot when we're driving and it's not correct to just say check the mirrors all the time. If you try and do that on your test, the examiner will see straight through it and know that you're trying to cheat him and probably not paying full attention to the road and doing proper observations. So let's learn when to check the mirrors properly. If you're changing speed, you need to check what's around you. Let's say we're setting off from a set of traffic lights. We've been stationary for a while and the lights have just turned green and we're gonna drive off. What if there was a cyclist overtaking on the left or a motorbike overtaking on the right and you didn't have that information before you set off? That could be a problem because if you try to weave or they try to get in front of you at the last second, then we might have a little problem. So before you set off, what's behind, what's on my left, what's on my right, and let's keep everyone safe on the road. If we're slowing down, changing speed to slow down, you need to know what's behind you. So let's check the vehicle behind, and if there's someone traveling too close, tailgating, I know people shouldn't do that, but people do do that. So it's best to keep yourself safe, check what's behind, and then you know how hard you can brake. Before you signal, you need to put a signal on. No. Before you signal, you need to check the mirrors. Let's say there's a cyclist undertaking on the left-hand side. If we haven't checked the mirrors and there's a cyclist coming past and we put a signal on, how's that gonna make them feel? Shock, scared, thinking that you're gonna turn straight into them. They might have a little wobble, they might fall off, and that could be a problem. So if we check the mirrors and there's a cyclist there, we could just hold back on the signal for a couple of seconds, let them pass, and then signal our intentions. Before you do any steering with the steering wheel, however slight, you need to have checked the mirrors already first. So even if we're gonna just move the steering wheel five minutes to the right. We need to know what's on our right first before we do that because cyclists and motorbikes overtake super close. Even if we just adjust our position slightly and there's someone on the right, we could take someone out. So we need to know what's around us at all times when you're thinking about moving around on the road. So mirrors come before absolutely every action that you take in your car. Let's drive around for a bit and we'll see how much I use the mirrors. <laughs> I'm gonna pull away from the side of the road. Firstly, 
I need to know what's around me. I've checked, it's clear, and I'm gonna move. I'm gonna take a right turn, and I'm gonna make sure I know what's on my right before I do that. What if there was a cyclist on the right, and I didn't check it first? Okay, I'm coming up to the end of the road, I'm gonna check my mirrors before I signal. I'm moving into the left to reposition, so I'm checking my left mirror, and I've checked the right mirror already, but I'm gonna have another look because it's been a couple of seconds since I last looked, and the picture changes very quickly, especially when it's busy. So I'm gonna turn left, checking my mirrors, signal, I'm repositioning, so I'm checking again. I'm looking around. It's been a couple of seconds since I last checked the left mirror. A cyclist could have sneaked up the left-hand side, so I recheck. And as I'm driving down the road, every, let's say, eight to 10 seconds, I'm gonna have a look at the rear view mirror and keep updated with the picture behind me. One second you've got a car, the next second you've got a motorbike, and motorbikes always like to overtake, so it's really useful to have that information before it happens. So, checking my rear view mirror, and I'm gonna turn right, so I'm checking my mirror in pairs before I signal. It's been a couple of seconds, so I'm gonna recheck before I turn. Now I'm slowing down, so I'm checking what's behind me. There's nothing behind me, so I know I can slow down as I want to, and as I set off, I'm gonna check all three mirrors again to make sure there's nothing coming past me at the same time as I move away. Now let's turn right at the end of the road, check, check, signal. I'm repositioning, so I'm gonna check the left, I'm slowing down, let's check behind again just in case it's changed and there's a car behind me now. And before I set off, because it's been a couple of seconds, I'm gonna recheck and make sure I stay updated with what's behind me and what's around. Now I'm driving down quite a long road. So you might think it's okay to just look at what's ahead. Let's look at what's behind as well because that's important information. If there was a motorbike behind me now, what I could do to take evasive action is check both mirrors, move slightly to the left to make it easier for the motorbike to overtake me. Guys, I hope you found that video helpful. That's the basics of mirrors. Obviously, there's slightly more to it. When you start to learn junctions, you're gonna use MSPSL, like you saw me do just then. If you're gonna do dual carriageways, you need to learn how to change lanes effectively using the mirrors and to keep everyone else safe. So we've covered how to set the mirrors up, when to use them, and what blind spots are. Hopefully that made sense. You were using that for revision after you've done it on a lesson, or you were using that video because you're about to do the lesson and it's gonna make a lot more sense when you get in the car. Remember to do the trick and check how far away things look when you look at them in the door mirrors because that's an eye opener, trust me. Like the video, comment on the video. I always respond to the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more useful and interesting tutorials and other driving topics. I'm Francis the Instructor for Get Licensed Driving School and I'll catch you guys in the next video.